Hi guys, this is a lightning fast review of a camping bed and it's the high gear four leg camp bed. This uh, comes in a sturdy bag, it's weighty, it's not, uh, it's not light so it's, uh, it's okay for, for motorcycle, scooter or motor camping but uh, definitely not hiking gear but then again hikers you know they might as well just carry a bin bag. Any road, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip forward now. I'm going to do a lightning review of this. Uh, this this bed is ideal for keeping your your back off the ground and off the cold weather from striking through to stop it. And so it comes in a bag. And so what you get with it is you get four legs. These are wire legs work under compression you also get the inner poles for each side you get three for each side and you also get the fabric itself which makes up the bed so how do you do it well I've already tried this once and uh, what I found is that an ideal tool to work with this is that it's just a stubby screwdriver. It's a posi drive. Doesn't have to be a posi drive, but it works just as well. Uh, and I'll show you for why. First of all, what you've got to do is you've got to find out which end is your head that usually tells you and then what you got to do is you got to feed the pole through now you've got a middle pole an end pole and a cranked pole so the cranked pole is for some sort of head support but it doesn't really uh, you couldn't call it a head support in a row what you got to do is you got to feed it through now on the end You've got a loop, and I'll show you how the screwdriver works with the loop in a minute. But that's where you've got to feed it through, through there. And you've got to pass these holes. So what you've got to do is you've got to feed it in like that. And then you've got to push it through, past the holes. Now, at this stage, you don't really have to worry too much about lining up the uh, holes for the legs because I'll show you in a minute how I've worked out is the best way to do it. Now, these poles are just slotted in. They're pretty loose. So, I'll come back a bit. So, uh, so you see, they're not exactly uh, a tight fit. So they will come out inside this uh, fabric, the actual bed itself, if you're not careful. Now what you've got to do is make sure that it goes all the way down to the bottom. And once it's down to the bottom, you can then pull it. And this is where, this is where this comes in. Because I found trying to pull this tab over that, and if you look at that, that's the relaxed, the relaxed measurement. You've got a good inch there, you've got to pull over. So, what I found was if you put that into the loop like that, so let's make sure I've got some white behind me, put that like that, that gives you the ability to pull on the fabric. Now I suppose over time the fabric will probably loosen up a bit. But you've got to get it over there and that's the only way that i found i could do it maybe it's just me but doing it like that and pulling it over that to get that part there in so that's how i did it now you repeat the process with the other side see you've got the bottom the middle and the top and it's easy to put together 
because the bottom and the top go into the middle. Now, the next trick is to feed it through into the sleeve on the other side. So once you've fed it through, and this is what could happen. You see how it's come out the hole? That's what you've got to watch for. Otherwise, if you don't keep your eye on it, what you end up doing is you feed it all the way through and find out you're going to go back again. And uh, I did this, and it is a pain in the backside. But once you get used to it, so you feed it through, and then you get to the last hole, and you make sure. Now, I'm doing it in my conservatory, and it's probably a lot easier because I'm butting it up against the curb there but uh, and we step but uh, when it comes to doing it in the field I think it's going to be a different different case altogether any road again feeding that through the loop Let's come up close feeding it through the loop like that and then what I'm doing let's see if I can I'm pulling on there to get it over and there you go so that's how you have to do it so that's that now when it comes to to putting the legs in this is ideal for that because when you put these legs in you're putting them in under pressure what I found is the easiest way is to get one leg and then once you put the screwdriver into the hole, you find there's a wide part to the hole, and there's a there's a wide part and a narrow part to the hole. You put that in the wide part, and then you get your leg, and you insert your leg into the hole like that. Once you've got it in, you know that your leg is going to come away from it. So what I've done then is I've come to here and I've got the hole and I turn it. I turn it so that I can get more or less a 90 degree angle into there like that. So this is the thing. Now it's a it's a three-armed, three-legged, three-handed job. But what you do is you get that under pressure. Then you use your weight, push it down, and guide it in. And there's a bit of a knack to it, but once you <laughs> once you once you get a hold of it and you get the first one in, you've cracked it. Now this is the thing. It's turned round in there, so you've got to turn it back. You've got to have the hole pointing that way, like that. So you turn it round like that. And then you get the first one in. And what you've got to do is tease it in like that. Get it. Now, you hear that click, that's the first one in. Now the second one, and you've got to make sure your holes are the right way round because they swivel round, you see. So that's where this stubby screwdriver comes in. So you get your, your second leg, tease it into the hole, make sure it's all the way home. And then again, and now this one you'll find a little bit easier to get in because it's already been held up by the back. So it gets easier as you go along. The first one's the hardest. You get that locked home. And then I'll back up a bit 
so you can see and then you press down now I've, what I've done is I've got my arm straight I put my thumb there and I push it down like that and tease it straight in and that's it and now the last one now where's the hole let's just check to see where the hole is it would have been ideal if they had designed this in such a way if they had designed this in such a way that the poles didn't swivel around inside but let's go again in we go clicks home and there you have it now will it all meet now I weigh nine and a half stone but that was the last time I weighed myself and I was 19 years old so let's see if it takes my weight there you go comfy I don't think you'd have any problem sleeping on that the only thing is is getting up now here's the thing as you can see there if you look at them wires imagine that on your ground sheet in your tent now to me that's an issue because if your ground sheet is a polypropylene standard ground sheet built into your tent I think after a bit them wires are going to go through and yeah you could have a, a thicker one underneath what I've done is I've made these now what these are is feet to go underneath and the way that they work is them two grooves fit onto there like that so that there will stay on there like that and then that sits on your ground sheet and so when you put all four on and you put them onto the floor it's actually sat on one of these spreading out the weight onto your ground sheet it's not a complicated job it's just a, a bit of scrap wood I had and I had some spruce spars that I had but you can uh, you can use anything all it is is just to to cause a groove that the the feet were going and I'm now going to show you how I made it so I'm here in my workshop and it's the uh, it's the bed supports I suppose you could call them or feet for the high gear camp bed now what I've done I've just got these scraps well it was it was a long scrap but now it's four short scraps and I've cut them to 20 inches and uh, what I'm doing now is this is old TNG but it's quite thin and it's light weighs next to nothing because weight weight is everything in in all things or most things but uh, yeah so what I'm doing is I'm cutting the T and the G off so by cutting the T and the G off the edges that gives me a smooth a smoother edge now the thing is with these I've cut the TNG I've got four of them so I'm going to be cutting them all but uh, I'm not going to torture you with watching me cut 
all the TNG off all four. So what I've done, I've already cut these off and uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to round or corner off the edges of these because you've got to remember that in a tent you've got a ground sheet. Now the ground sheet is polypropylene sheeting, basically like a like a, an industrial tarp and so when the the legs press down and they're about as thick as that pencil when they press down onto the the ground sheet they're going to force their way through and ruin the ground sheet so when using one of these beds camp beds what you want to do is make sure that it doesn't work its way through so now what I'm going to do is uh, and I've got air plugs in so I can't hear this as loud as you will but I'm going to cut the corners off that's all I'm going to do just cut the corners off like that now the thing is once I've taken a, uh, a sander and the sanding blocks I use are the, the 3M type the spongy they're great for finishing off but for for rough sanding through I use a permagrip tool these I came across these about 10-15 yeah about maybe 20 years ago and uh these last forever the brilliant permagrit they're, they're expensive but then again if you work it out pound for pound with sandpaper you can spend if you do a lot of uh a lot of work and woodworking and building and that kind of thing uh diy like i do well then i've used it countless times but uh so what i'm gonna do is uh I'm going to round off all the corners and when I've rounded off the corners and made them all nice and smooth then what that's going to do is that's going to help to protect the ground sheet and stop it from, from cutting through which is what you don't want because if you want your tent to last well then, you need it all nice and round, and so you just keep working away until you round all the corners, all the sharp edges, take them all off. And then I finish it off with the, the sanding block get a nice smooth finish and then you see what's the difference it's nice and smooth as opposed to the sharp edges you don't want any of that to break through your ground sheet so you the rounder the better now I, I won't finish there I will concentrate on all these corners until they're all more or less perfectly round and all smooth all the way around and that I will do on all four and then they will be my support plates for the bed, the sleeping bed, camp bed in my tent. Can't beat fiddling about in the loft, can you?
that's the last one done. So that's all four of the boards sanded. So, if you'll notice what I did there, I had the, uh, and before anybody mentions anything, I did use an electric sander to rough off before I actually used the finishing sanders. But what I've got here is simply a block of wood that uh, fortunately if you've got uh, a workbench you can do this, you can just screw things to it uh, and work around things. This is just a simple block of, uh, block of wood that I made some time ago and uh, I can butt up against it there, it's got a little lip I put onto it there or in this case I put it so I'm just over the edge and I can sand when I'm sanding I can uh, I can do this along the edge and it doesn't move and then I can come that way and I can run round there like that and it doesn't go anywhere it, ideally if I want to cut something with a saw I can saw it against that and then the beauty of this is that when I finish with it all I've got to do is just unscrew it the only thing I'm left with is two holes in the desk in the worktop so uh, that's that so the next thing now is in making these platforms if you like for the legs on the camp bed and there is the legs. Them are the legs that go onto the camp bed, the Euro gear camp bed, and uh, obviously they're squeezed in under pressure, which uh, gives you stability. But that's how they're going to sit like that. So, as I've got that on there, that's going to sit like that, and there'll be four of them. But, and this is the thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these, this is some old stock from when I used to, I used to build model aircraft and uh, this is some old stock, these are spruce quarter inch by quarter inch spars and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use these to, uh, to make supports Two, four, six, eight. To support the legs and stop them from sliding about. So uh, what I'll do is I'll two, four. same colour, a bit pedantic like that. So two, four, six, eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these to length and then once I've cut them to length I'm then going to super glue them in the middle of each one. So what I might as well do is do it now while we're here. That's my dear old late father's sander. And uh, it must be about 30 years old now, but it's still working strong. So what I'm going to do is cut the I'm going to cut the spruce spars and uh, on me me saw here. So I might as well run the full length 
of each platform or foot or whatever we ought to call them give or take so what I'm going to do I'm going to mark that there like that pity I couldn't get two out of one but these are 36 inches and I'm going to cut them at an angle so that uh, it makes it a little bit neater So now, when I put them on there like that, what that's going to do is that's going to be more stable for the foot. So that will sit in there like that. And so what I'll do is, when I put the camp bed in my tent, I'll put these feet underneath. And this is going to sit right in there. It's going to stop it moving about in the middle of the night. For the sake of a little bit of extra work, makes a job twice as good. So, first of all, I'm going to guesstimate the middle of these. And I'm going to use Use a little bit of super glue or cyanoacrylate that was actually developed in the Second World War for the fighter pilots when they were injured in the Spitfires in the war. The glass was actually proper glass at the start of the war inside the cockpits of the fighter pilots' planes, and as it shattered, it would nick and slice the fighter pilots and the bomber pilots faces and so they couldn't stitch them because the flaps were too small or thin and so I don't know who it was but somebody created this cyanoacrylate or what we now call super glue to stick down the flaps and cuts to help them to heal so I've got my pencil mark so what I'm going to do now, and if you can see there, it's chamfered. I'm going to I'm going to be sanding block while I'm at it before I forget, and I'm just going to smooth off the edge of them like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some super glue on the reverse side of it like that and then I'm simply going to place it on the line and hold it down and just count to 10 and then once I've got to 10 I'll probably play safe give it another 10 the beauty of wood is that the cyanoacrylate or super glue soaks into the wood and so uh, it sticks quite well 
but uh, what you need to do is to keep it bonded for it to go off. You can tell when it starts to bond because it's not loose at any edges but this is loose at the edge so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a little bit down there and I'm just going to push it in and then I'm going to spray it with activator and what that's going to do is cause this cyanoacrylate to go off rapid and that now has gone off now what I'm going to do to play safe is I'm going to run the super glue down there like that I'm going to allow it to bleed in underneath the, the wood And then activate it. Now the thing is there's no activator on this wood on this side which means I've now got to make sure that this is an absolute dead fit right from the get-go. So I need that now go on to there like that and to fit in between them two parts that make contact with the floor so what I'm going to do I'll leave that there like that I'm now going to put the super glue and run it onto the back edge and I'm going to be sticking to this Bearing in mind that once this goes onto there, it's going to bite. So it's a one hit wonder, one shot deal. So I'm going to put it that way. Now it's a three handed job, really, this, but I should be able to, to manage this. If I play my card right by simply flipping it over and holding it in place like that. And I think that's done the job. So now That will support the leg as it's on the ground sheet and it won't dig in. So there's a nice comfortable fit there but as you can see it's enough to hold it still. So now what I'm going to do is play safe again and I'm going to run some more super glue into the joint and that will go off and there we have it Now if you have a look at that, that is nice and neat, but when you come to that, it's a wee bit longer, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just edge that off. A bit 
drying heater. Otherwise that would drive me mad. I don't know whether it's an age thing, but as you get older you get a little bit more pedantic. But then on the other hand, there's other things I don't give a shit about. So there you go. But that is how I've made my camp bed camp bed foot, I shall call them. Away you go. So you can sleep better at night now, knowing that. And so, that's the high gear four legged camp bed. And you now know how to put it up, and you know what to do to stop it going through the ground sheet. And taking it down is just a reverse. Press your weight on it, pull it, job done. Pull it, job done. Pull it, job done. Pull it, job done. You slide these poles back out and you put it back in your bag. You pack up and you bugger off home. So there you go. So if you like my uh, video, please click the like button. If you don't like it, click the dislike button. If you've got any comments, please put the comments down below and uh, please subscribe. The more the merrier. Okay, y'all be cool now.